So guys, can we have a round of applause for our first guest speaker, Cheryl Ty of Cupcake Central. Cheryl, thank you very much. There's your microphone and the clicker. All right. Hey guys. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my story and how I got to baking cupcakes for a living and turn my passion into something that is viable and we have customers and we generate revenue and we also have a lot of staff. Um, so to start off, um, I always want to talk about, you know, start off by thinking back to when you're eight years old and if someone was to ask you the question, what do you want to be when you grow up, how would you respond? So you want to uh, answer that question or share with us? A writer. A writer, yeah. Captain America. Captain America. Awesome. <laughs> So when I was eight and my parents asked me the question, you know, what do you want to do with your life? I just instinctively said that I wanted to change the world. I don't know why I just said that. And, you know, I think um, being an Asian heritage, they really wanted me to say that I wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, and I didn't say any of those things. Um, but for me, I just knew from a very young age I was put on this earth to do something um, that I really was passionate about. Um, so when I went through, I guess, the story of how I kind of went through and found my own passion and turned it into a reality and, it, and um, made that happen, was that I, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I um, finished high school. I just knew that I hated maths and I, had a, I hated science, so I knew that I couldn't be an accountant or a doctor. Um, but I really found inspiration from my uncle who was an IT consultant and he was working on lots of cool projects to, and he would travel the world and you know he would just make lots of money and I thought that's what I want to do. So I studied business information systems and you know my dream job was to become an IT consultant for a huge um, firm and I eventually landed that dream job of mine. But I, yeah, quickly realised that that wasn't really what I was passionate about. And it was really when I went over to New York, um, that's where it kind of all happened. Um, and I'm not sure if anyone has heard of the Magnolia Bakery, but Magnolia Bakery is a super, super famous bakery. People line up for hours just to eat a cupcake, and I had no idea, didn't really like cupcakes at all, didn't really like sweets, but I remember um, you know, seeing the cupcakes and people lining up and I was quite curious. So I thought, I'll do the same thing. I'll line up a couple of hours for that cupcake and I eventually had the first bite of this cupcake and I was just obsessed. Something just overtook me, had this passion, came back, was baking all the time um, and any opportunity I got, I was baking cupcakes for friends and family and I would bring them into work as well. So I really developed this dream to Want to open up my own cupcake bakery. I was only 21 at the time, didn't really know how, but I continued to bake at home, um, you know, for friends and family and bring them into work. Um, and I would dream about it every day of going to work. Uh, so, but, you know, working in the corporate world, it wasn't for me. I was just so bored, I was uninspired. I remember going into work every morning. I'd sit in my car five minutes before nine and I'll think about all the ways I could call in sick. <laughs> and eventually I'll just rock up to work and I just, you know, the first thing I would do was literally open up a browser and look through different types of cupcakes, looking at reading my favourite cupcake blog and just dreaming about this cupcake bakery that I wanted to open. Um, and I really hated life and I realised that was... Um, I felt like I was missing something. I felt like my life is way too short to be living it, you know, in front of a computer and um, falling asleep in meetings. Uh, and I really just lived for two days of the week. I just noticed that every Monday I'm going to work and I dread it. I dread Mondays coming around and I'll just wait for Fridays. And I thought to myself, is this what I'm living for? Two days of the week? Um, and as fate would have it, uh, the day that changed my life, 2009, the GFC hit and I was called into a meeting one day, didn't know what was happening, 9am in the morning and I got put into 
a meeting with my managers and my, the directors and they basically handed me a yellow envelope saying that I no longer had my job. And so that was a real defining moment in my life because for me, I had been working, climbing the corporate ladder, waiting for my promotion and, and you know, getting that pay rise and it didn't come. And so the first week I just remember, I just remembered that I was extremely, you know, upset, scared, didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and about after a week I just realised that this was probably the best day of my life because I had been waiting for so long to start my own business and this gave me an opportunity to start. And, you know, the small redundancy package that I had was good enough to start a business. So I decided that I would take six months off um, and work on my business. And if it didn't work, I could always go back into the corporate world. And so I did a few things in the first three months. Um, and they were really simple things because I kind of like to work backwards. I was a business analyst and um, I did a lot of project management as well. So I knew that I had to have deadlines. So the first three months, what I did was I scribbled out a business plan. I normally am quite... Uh, I get distracted quite easily, so I remember popping my phone in the car and then I went into a cafe just with a notebook and a pen and I started jotting down, imagining what my bakery would look like, what we would sell, how customers would feel when they walk in, um, and even writing down to the detail, you know, bake at this time of the day, making sure that people could look into our bakery and watch us bake. Um, everything would be really high quality. All these little things I kind of drew out. I even drew out like, um, you know, the tables where the tables were and, <laughs> and like a, a plan of how my store would look like. And so it just started from there and it was really, really quite simple. I didn't even Google what a business plan looked like. I just kind of just put it all down and what I thought it should look like. And then I registered my business name. It was super easy. The hardest part was actually coming up with a name for the business. Um, so, you know, after probably two weeks of every single day spending about two to three hours trying to figure out all these names, I eventually came up with Cupcake Central and it was an interesting name because it was the name of one of my old bosses. So we used to make, I used to make cupcakes and bring them into work and there was one day where everyone would bring in, it's kind of like a potluck, everyone would bring in something that they cooked. And she sent around an email going, oh, Cheryl's got her Cupcake Central. Um, and so I kind of stuck with that. And it's, yeah, it was one of those things that I couldn't think of any other name. And, and that kind of stuck with me, which has been a really cool um, kind of thing from the very beginning. And so I registered myself as a sole trader. Um, and again, that was super easy. Went online, did that. There's so many websites now you can just Google and, and um, yeah, go through the process of doing that. Uh, I registered my home kitchen, so that's one of the things that uh, taught me the very first lesson of being an entrepreneur, was that I didn't know anything about registering my home kitchen. Um, I went out and asked all my friends. I asked a lot of friends, hey, do you know how to you know, register a home kitchen? And a lot of them hadn't registered a home kitchen before, but they would all give me lovely advice, and some of them would say, oh, it cost tens of thousands of dollars and you need a whole separate kitchen and so when I would hear these, these, this advice I would I'd feel really scared because I'm like I don't have tens of thousands of dollars and I can't afford to build a second kitchen but I just thought hey I'm going to call up the council, um, my local council and ask them and so when I did that it, and realised that it cost less than $500 to make some modifications and, and could get it registered um, quite easily that was my first revelation that when I need to go out and find advice and answers that I'd be asking people that had gone through and that had done it rather than seeking advice and answers from people that hadn't. Um, and then I also um, launched my online business. So with my IT background, I and back then you couldn't really just, you know, start a website on Squarespace or anything like that. So this is about know, um, almost 10 years ago, I asked a lot of my friends that were in IT that could develop websites and, and I did a lot of bartering. So meaning I would kind of um, say, hey, I'll make cupcakes for your wedding and you can build me a website. So that's exactly what I did. And, you know, I really was quite um, clever with my money 
and making sure that I wasn't just spending tens and thousands of dollars on things that I didn't need because I knew that I had six months um, before I had to go back to work, so I needed to make every dollar count. Um, and so I started my business with less than $2,000. So for me, um, I really wanted to make sure that I was spending most of my money on things that I had to, rather than the nice to have. Um, and this is a photo of my first cupcakes. You can see they're really beautiful. <laughs> so no. um, it, I just like to show you a photo of the very first time I baked because, you know, that moment I could have just given up. I could have just thought, you know what, I'm not made for baking, but. I remember bringing these in to, to work and a few, uh, a few of my colleagues said, oh, they're really good. I didn't even have a working oven at that time. I had like, I baked them out of this little toaster oven. And you know, I, I'm pretty sure that they're pretty brown and, and black and burnt, but um, yeah, everyone seemed to like them. And, and that's when it sparked my passion because I realized that people were eating these cupcakes and going, oh my God, these are good. And, and so that kind of got me addicted to baking cupcakes and improving each time. Um, and then once I launched my business online, I started selling them at the markets. So I actually set the date of selling at the market before I even registered my home kitchen. Um, I knew that if I had set a date and put down a deposit to sell at a farmer's market, that um, I would be pushed to do all of these things and tick them off the list. So, you know, create my product line, create the flavors, create a menu, register my business name, um, get, you know, food registration and all that sort of stuff. So for me, I really wanted to work backwards with a timeline um, because, yeah, sometimes if you have a goal or something and you don't have a set date, you kind of just keep dragging it on. So for me, that was how I kind of started and, and made myself accountable to making it work. And so I guess over the last, over the eight years, um, these are the achievements that we've created. So I forgot to mention that I do have a business partner as well. So after I um, launched it at home, within about nine months, I was so busy baking cupcakes at home, I couldn't do it anymore. And so at this point, my ex-boyfriend and I decided to open up a store. So over the last eight years, we've built um, you know, five retail stores, so they're physical retail stores, uh, and we also obviously do a lot of um, orders online as well. Um, you know, we've got, I don't even know if this is an accurate figure, but 75 or 80 staff as well. Um, you know, we've, uh, We've got, yeah, we've baked well over one and a half million cupcakes. Uh, we've got a huge following on Instagram and Facebook. And I don't even know how that happened, but we've got over a million views on, on YouTube. So I think I just remember, you know, posting a video that I really took on my phone. It was so bad. But um, yeah, it just kind of went viral. And, and so for me, I just realized that, you know, the power of social media has really helped my business grow because I didn't have any money for marketing. Um, and then I've also published, we've also published two cookbooks, which was a really huge and hard project, but it's one of the most um, rewarding projects as well because we knew that we were only going to open stores up in Melbourne, so there were all these opportunities worldwide and we couldn't get to these people. And so for us, having a cookbook meant that people that were following us um, internationally or all around Australia could actually share in what we created and bake our cupcakes as well. Um, so I guess where it all started and how I guess we've been able to build um, and grow, I believe it all starts with the brand, vision and values. Uh, so we've never really swayed from these three things. So for us, we always looked at quality and the experience and also the aspiration. So the aspiration element of it is, um, you know, I really imagined when people were holding our cupcakes that they would, um, you know, walk into a, a walk into a bar or a restaurant, and when they're holding our cupcakes, other people would be like, "Wow, they're cupcake central cupcakes." And funnily enough, these days, even if I go to restaurants and see our cupcakes and I'm spying on them, they, um, you know, I can hear these comments, and people are really impressed by them. And we are known for be making the best and freshest cupcakes in Melbourne. Um, so on to the next thing, I, I really believe and I, I tell all of my staff this, that we're not in the business of selling cupcakes. Um, cupcakes is just a byproduct, what we're here is to sell an experience. 
because these days um, it is all about the experience, the interaction with people. And so for us, we work on lots of different things to create that experience for customers. Um, we do a lot of workshops. We were one of uh, we're the first customer for We Teach Me. So um, for for me, uh, when I thought about I want to teach people how to bake cupcakes, people thought I was insane. They thought I was crazy. They would be like. Why are you teaching your recipes to, to other people? Why would you give away your secrets? And for me, it's about creating ex an experience for them. So, you know, when they come into our store and they get to experience baking cupcakes from scratch, um, that's something that they learn and they'll never forget. And, you know, they're not always going to bake cupcakes, but the next time they think about eating cupcakes, they'll, they'll think about us because they've got that experience tied in. And so everything from customer experience um, online and in-store, our stores are really quite different to typical cupcake stores, so they're not pink and frilly. And this is like a, um, a yeah, it's definitely my business partner, Tim. He's really built up the brand. But it all started when, you know, he wanted to become a business partner. He didn't want to work in a pink frilly cupcake store. He's like, no way am I going to work in a pink cupcake so he really built the, the brand up to becoming a gender neutral brand. Um, it's actually swaying a bit more on the masculine, so I think brands and logos have a masculine or feminine energy, and I think with us we're a little bit more masculine, which attracts a lot of guys. So cupcakes, you know, women will always flock to cupcakes. It is, you know, we love them, and um, but for men, you know, it can be a little bit daunting to step into a pink store. So, I mean, with the branding, we've had customers from all spectrums come to our store and not have to pretend that they're buying cupcakes for their girlfriends. So it's kind of one of those smart things that he's, he's done as well. Um, so on to the challenges. Um, it is definitely very challenging. When I started out with a dream of opening up a cupcake store, I only thought about just having one store, that's it. I was just happy with one bakery, but as we kind of grew, and we had a lot of opportunities presented to us. Um, it was more of a flow, it just kind of happened. But along the way, it's been really, really challenging as well. So uh, a few things that I wanted to, to share with you is that um, I think very, at the very beginning, the first 10 months was terrible. Like for me, I was working about oh, 15 to 18 hours a day. So I'd wake up at 4 a.m., start baking, um, and then I'd clean up the kitchen and serve customers, and then close up the store around 6 o'clock, and then have to do the books, and then marketing, and, and you know, go to sleep at around 10 and, and have that start all over again seven days a week. So that was like a never-ending cycle. And I just remember one day, I think 10 months into it, I just woke up going, this is not the dream my vision. I'm doing something wrong. And so I started to think about how other entrepreneurs are working because I didn't feel like an entrepreneur. I didn't even know, really think I was an entrepreneur. Um, but I knew that I had a small business owner mindset because I was doing everything. I didn't want to delegate. I didn't want to teach others how to do it. Um, and it was really one of those things that there was a defining moment. I just remember I was so tired. I was taking the cupcakes out of the oven and my arms just couldn't lift the trays because the trays are super heavy. And so I just remember dropping them and then I just broke down and ran up to <laughs> the cupboard upstairs and I just locked myself in there and cried for about an hour. And then um, you know, I just thought, I need to change. I need to figure out how I can learn how to be an entrepreneur. Um, so that's when I started um, finding other people that were doing really what I wanted to do and learn from them. Um, so look, I went out to a lot of you know networking events like this, met other people, uh, started learning from them, um, and I started investing money in the right areas. So we didn't pay ourselves for a very long time. Um, we paid ourselves a little bit just to get by, but you know that was like maybe two, three hundred dollars a week, um, or even less sometimes. But uh, every opportunity we got, we started hiring staff. So hiring the right people so that even if it was like two days a week, and then it eventually became a full-time role for them, then we could start getting ourselves out from doing the day-to-day -day and working with strategy and building like sales and um, marketing and then getting ourselves out from that whole um, small business owner mindset. Um, 
Yeah, and finding mentors. I think mentors is one of those things that has really helped me along the way. And mentors is quite an interesting thing because you don't go out and you find people and you go, will you be my mentor? It is one of those things that become quite natural. You might meet them and you might click, kind of like dating, you know, you get the flow, then you kind of start meeting up for coffee and then you find that you start meeting up once a month. Um, but I've had so many different mentors along the way um, that has really helped me grow. And I think if you, uh, finding mentors is one of those things where they're, the best ones aren't paid, you don't pay for them because they they want to give it back. They want to pay back. They want to see others in their position, um, you know, what, from way back when, um, they want to see them kind of grow as well. So it is respecting their time and making sure that you know what you're both getting out of it and really taking their advice really, you know, um, making sure that you do take their advice and, and getting back to them and letting them know how you're growing and all that sort of stuff. So that's how I've been able to maintain my mentor relationships. Um, so on to how we've kind of been able to grow with our sales and and without with very little marketing um, funds. Um, so for us, we've just used social media a lot. So when I first started, I didn't think Instagram was even around actually. So when I first started about yeah nine ten years ago, we used Facebook, and at that time, I would even use my network. So for me, I was just posting up all the time, but found that engagement was one of those things that um, as a business owner you have to do yourself at the, at the very beginning. That's how I kind of grew it because you can't just teach someone that's external to kind of have that essence of who you are or who the business is because you're still trying to figure out and grow your business as well but the essence really comes from you. So it is one of those things that I had to put in the hard yards, you know. I'm so tired at night but I still had to do these things because for me, that was how I learned the quickest and how I understood what the customer wanted as well. Um, so using social media um, has been amazing. Um, you know, and I always follow these four things. So it's called the four E's of social, social media. Uh, so when I think about posting anything on social, I want to think about if it, if it fits into one of these categories. So if it's entertaining for them, um, am I engaging with them? Uh, am I enlightening them? So if it's something that we're sharing, you know, information or recipes, things like that, um, oh, that could be education as well. But yeah, it's just, if it falls into one of those categories, I'll post it. If it doesn't, then I don't post it. Um, on to um, this one, and this is probably one of my um, lifelong kind of quotes. Uh, it is something that I truly believe in and I've always known since I was in high school is that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And so throughout my whole life, I've really, um, you know, taken notice of the people that I surround myself with. And every time I go through a period of growth, it's about who I surround myself with. And sometimes it's great to have friends where you can you know, have fun and chat and party with, but then you also want to know um, that these friends will support you and they're not putting you down um, and they're not, you know, making you feel ridiculous with all these crazy ideas that you might have. And so um, the way I've been able to make sure that I'm growing with a really great group of people is finding organisations that, um, that are in line with my own values. So uh, one of the best things I've ever joined is Entrepreneurs Organisation. Um, I've also started um, an organisation called League of Extraordinary Women, which is for female entrepreneurs. That kind of just came out by, I guess, by chance. Um, but for me, it was super isolating. When I was starting out, you know, especially working at home, I didn't have anyone to talk to. Um, so it was to me, you know, trying to find those people. So that kind of evolved naturally, and, and now we run all these conferences and events for women that are starting out or thinking of starting a business. So, yeah, it's been life changing for me. So, I thought I'd share with you my life changing stuff and things that have really helped me grow and that has, yeah, I couldn't have done any without this. So, um, a couple of books there. So, Awaken the Giant Within. I read that when I was 15 years old. And I think that sparked my whole journey of going, actually, you know, is this what life has to offer? Um, so that really challenged me to, to think bigger. 
Um, Think and Grow Rich uh, by Napoleon Hill, which is really awesome. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, Tim Ferriss, I'm such a Tim fan. Um, the War of Art, so not the Art of War, it's The War of Art. It's one of the most amazing books, it's super small, but it talks about how, you know, we continually struggle with ourselves to wanting to do the work, basically. Um, yeah, and then a blog, uh, Ramit Seti, I will teach you how to be rich. It sounds really <laughs> one of those sales evenings, but um, he's extremely awesome in terms of um, really something that you want to learn how to make money and grow. That's a really cool and cool blog. And obviously joining entrepreneur, entrepreneurs organization. Um, and some practices that I've learned, and everyone always asks me this question, you know, what's one thing you wish you knew when you were younger? And I think that would be meditation. Um, for me, I've tried meditating for like probably 10 years, but uh, for the last three years, I do something called Vedic meditation, which is something incredible that's life-changing for me, and I do it daily. Um, journaling, I do, and Miracle Morning, so that's Miracle Morning, something that my forum or my group in EO um, has taught me, and so I love, I love that. It's actually so simple, but life-changing, so just Google that. And um, saying yes to opportunities before I'm ready. So there were always a lot of opportunities along the way before, yeah, it's just one of those things that, um, you know, normally I would say no, not ready, but um, one example is, you know, our second store at Melbourne Central, um, when they asked us and approached us to open up a store there, I was like, no way, we have no money. I heard, you know, people tell me that you need half a million dollars in the bank before you can open a store up in a major shopping center. And I was just like, nah, can't afford it. There's no way, there's no way we could do it. But something inside of me just said, yeah, let's just go take a look. So I just remember going in and taking a look at Melbourne Central's new um, development. And I just could imagine our store being there and somehow we made it happen. And, and you know, the thing is, it was so bizarre because even though we had no money and we had no real credibility other than having one store for 10 months in Hawthorne, um, I, I sold them the dream and I said, you know what, I'm going to run workshops here, we're going to create a whole experience, we're going to make cupcakes fresh every morning so people can see, it's going to be an open kitchen. And then they just turned around and said, yeah, okay, we'll give you, you know, $100,000 to build it. And so for me, I was just like, what, people give you money to open up stores and get our contributions? So that was one of those things that it just kind of happened and I said yes before I was ready. And um, it was very stressful, but it was yeah, great moment. And then also the hell yes, hell no thing. So I think over time, you know, as much as you want to say yes to everything, there comes a point where you get too busy. So it could be anything. It could be going to dinner or meeting up with a friend or whatever it is. Um, I always applied this in my life, it is the hell yes or hell no scenario. So if someone says, hey, do you want to go out for dinner with me? If you don't feel like you want to say hell yes, no, hell yes, then it's a hell no. So I think for, for me, now I've realised that time is so scarce that I need to be so excited about something that I want to go all in. Otherwise, what's the point? Because I don't want to do, you know, half-assed things. So that's, um, yeah, that's one of my life-changing practices. Um, so yeah, on to the end of my prezo. Um, I guess, you know, when I started out and I asked you all, you know, think back to when you were eight years old and what you wanted to do in your life. Um, yeah, even if you wanted to be a writer or Captain America. <laughs> it's not to say that you need to be any of those things, but when you were young, you had a dream. You know, you had something that was exciting, you wanted to do it, and it made you feel, um, you know, really happy. Um, so it's about coming back to that point and thinking about what made you feel those things. And I think, for me, how Cupcake Central has been able to grow is because I've really, you know, thought about what makes me want to wake up every day, as corny as it sounds. Um, but every single day, I don't have that whole thing where I wake up not wanting to go into work. You know, I get to choose what I want to do each and every day. If I want to go and travel um, and still do work on the side, I can do that. 
Of course, it takes a lot of work, but you feel so much more fulfilled in life. Um, that's what I felt. And, and uh, to be able to um, think about how many people I've reached over the years, how many smiles I've put on faces with cupcakes, um, you know, how many diets I've broken as well. It's kind of like <laughs> one of those things that makes me feel like, wow, I've, I've somehow changed the world in my own little way. So, thank you.